Hi, it's Ellen, and today I'm going to be talking about major political parties in Weimar Germany. So to basically summarise the political alignments, we can regard the left-wing parties as mostly supporting the Weimar Republic, and the right-wing parties as generally opposing them. And the attitudes of more central parties are more somewhat varied. So firstly, let's jump into the DDP, also known as the German Democratic Party. This party was liberal, a pro-Weimar Republic party, and tended to attract a middle-class vote. However, we must remember they did not attract the majority of the middle-class vote, as the middle-class tended to be more conservative. The DDP was most popular in the 1919 elections, when it attracted about 17.3% of the vote. After that, it took less than 10% of the vote in elections, and by the end of the Republic, it was only attracting about 1%. Moving on to the KPD, which was the Communist Party. This party was revo revolutionary and Marxist, and it was aiming for a Soviet-style revolution. The party was formed from the USPD and the Spartacists, and it was distinctly anti-Weimar. From May 1922 to March 1923, the party regularly won between 10% and 15% of the votes in elections. However, the party's best performance was 16.9% in November 1932. The KPD was increasingly dominated by the USSR and hostile towards the SPD. And this split permanently weakened left-wing politics in Germany. Next, let's discuss the Zentrum Party. This party's primary aim was to protect Catholic interests. It regularly attracted about 40% of the Catholic vote, but also had a broad appeal across all the classes, and both the centre-left and the centre-right of politics. It supported the Weimar Republic, although there was a wide range of opinion within the party. And in terms of national elections, it regularly achieved about 15% of the vote. The Zentrum Party was included in every single coalition from 1919 through to 1932. And from 1928, historians have noted it moved more towards the right of the political spectrum. And we move on to the DVP, which was the German People's Party. Stressman was a founding member of the DVP. He was a monarchist and a moderate conservative. Under Stressman, the party was committed to the Weimar democracy and moderate social reform. Its main support was the liberal, Protestant, upper middle class and industrialists who were pro-free trade. And really, it was never a major force in Weimar politics. After Stressman died in 1929, the party moved to the right and became more openly hostile towards the Weimar Republic, and so losing its pro-democracy supporters. Next, we had the SPD, the Social Democratic Party. This party was pro-Weimar Republic, and it supported social and economic reform. Across its life, it did not attract the middle classes, and in the 1920s, it regularly took over 20% of the vote. Its best election performances were in 1919, where it took 38% of the vote, and May 1928, where it took 30% of the vote. The right wing disliked the SPD because it supported the Weimar Republic, and the right wing held the SPD responsible for the armistice and the subsequent Versailles Treaty. Politicians on the more extreme left were hostile because of the SPD's compromises in various coalitions and its use of the Freikorps in the early 1920s. And finally, we will discuss the DNVP, the German National People's Party. This was the main Conservative Party. Initially, it was hostile towards the Weimar Republic. However, later it changed its stance and joined coalition governments. The party's best electoral performance was in the elections of 1924, when it won about 20% of the vote. 
Otherwise, in the 1920s, the party won between 10 and 15 percent of the vote. From September 1930, its share of the vote dropped to between 6 and 9 percent. The DNVP was the party that represented interests of industrialists and large landowners. After major election losses in 1928, the party moved to the right. So just to sum up what we discussed, we spoke about the SPD and the opposition it faced. We know that the right wing disliked the SPD because it supported the Weimar Republic and it held it responsible for the armistice and the Versailles Treaty. On the other hand, politicians on the more extreme left were also hostile to the SPD. And this was because of their compromises in various coalitions and the use of the Fry Corps in the early 1920s. And if we go back to the DDP, which we discussed at the start, they were most popular in the 1919 elections when it attracted about 17.3% of the vote. But by the end of the Weimar Republic's life, it only attracted about 1% of the vote. The key character in Weimar politics and later German politics was the Nazi party. And that's also known as the NSDAP, which stands for National Socialist German Workers' Party. This party tried to appeal to as many people as possible, but its political views were deeply anti-Weimar and anti-democracy. The NSDAP was founded by Anton Drexler in Munich in 1890. And Drexler also devised the 25-point programme in 1920. This is also when the party changed its name to include the words nationalist and socialist. Hitler was a great orator, very charismatic and excelled at propaganda. And he became chairman and leader of the party in July 1921 after threatening to resign. In August 1921, Hitler set up the Nazi stormtroopers known as the SA. Many of Hitler's key ideas, ideas were based on nationalism and social Darwinism. And he believed in the unity of all Germans as a master race. This is known as pan-Germanism. In the 25-point programme, key themes such as anti-Semitism, anti-Marxism, anti-democracy and anti-capitalism were present. The 25-point programme is generally split into nationalist points and socialist points. If we discuss the nationalist ones, they include points such as point one, which was Lebensraum, which means that Germany must expand to take over more territory for its growing population. Point two concerned the abolition of the Versailles Treaty. Point four stated that, quote, no Jew may be a member of the German population. Point 25, a strong centralised authoritarian government was necessary to enfor enforce the 25 point programme. However, as discussed, there were also socialist aims. For example, point nine rested on the fact that all citizens had equal rights and duties. However, we should caveat that citizenship was dependent on pure German blood. Point 24 focused on the state providing education, health and provision for mothers, children and pensions. The quote was common good before personal gain. So how did the Nazis fare in the elections between 1924 and 1929? In the May 1924 election, after the trial for the Munich Putsch, the NSDAP gained 6.5% of the vote, which translated to 12 Reichstag members. By December 1924, this had fallen to 2.3%, and by May 1928 to 2.6%. The Nazi vote did pick up from the middle of May 1928, and particularly in rural areas. In the 1920s, the Nazis were shunned by respectable voters as they disliked its violent reputation with the SA. And so the NSDAP collaborated with the DNVP in the early 1930s to combat this. So in summarising what we know about Hitler's key ideas and what was presented in the 25-point programme, he believed in ideas of nationalism and social Darwinism, 
Amis manifested in the thoughts of the unity of all Germans as a master race. And in particular, Hitler had ideas based on anti-Semitism, anti-Marxism, anti-democracy and anti-capitalism. And if we cover the electoral success for the Nazi party, the vote in, by 1928 in May had fallen to 2.6%. And if we discuss the 25 point programme, some socialist points included point nine, which was that all citizens had equal rights and duties, and point 24, that the state provision would be made for education, health, mothers, children, and old aid pensions. Thank you for listening to this topic about the political parties in Germany. And next time, we're going to discuss the political stability between 1924 and 1929.